tax credits, incentives, and financing. Tax credits and incentives. Tax credits may be the biggest way to help offset the cost of solar. The Consolidated Appropriations Act, signed in December of 2015, extended the expiration date for the Residential Renewable Energy 30% Federal Investment Tax Credit and added a gradual step-down starting in 2020. The current 30% Federal Investment Tax Credit will be available through December 31, 2019. The tax credit will then drop to 26% for systems interconnected between January 1, 2020 and December 31, 2020 then to 22% for systems interconnected between January 1, 2021 and December 31, 2021. The tax credit is expected to expire for residential systems on December 31, 2021. To take advantage of the tax credit, you will need to have a tax liability. IRS Form 5695 is the form you or your tax professional will complete to claim the tax credit and submit with your tax filing for the year you installed your solar electric system. There is no cap for the tax credit and it can be applied to many renewable improvements or energy efficient upgrades. This tax credit can be carried over if the total credit is unable to be used in a single tax year. Check with your tax professional for more information on the federal tax credit. In addition to the federal tax credit, local incentives and state tax credits may be available. Check the DesireUSA.org website for more information on programs in your area. Solar PV Financing If you do not have the upfront capital to purchase a cash system, there are plenty of options for financing your PV system. You can purchase a system with a loan or you can contract with a third-party owner through a lease or power purchase agreement, also known as a PPA. Solar PV Loans You may not have the cash available to purchase your system outright, so there are different types of loans available. Home equity loans are an option, which are secured with the equity of your home. Your local bank or credit union may offer solar or energy efficient loans, and in some areas there are property assessed clean energy loans, also known as PACE, which may be available. PACE loans are approved based on the property value, not based on your personal credit. The PACE loan stays with the property, moving from one homeowner to the next, and the loan is currently available for 5, 10, and a 20-year payback periods, with interest rates varying depending on the length of the loan. If you purchase the system, you are considered the system owner and can take advantage of the 30% federal investment tax credit. Think of it as purchasing an asset that can add value to your home. You are responsible for operations and maintenance as a system owner, but are also protected by the manufacturer warranty for any failure of your system components as explained in the warranty documentation. Leases and PPAs. If you do not want to spend the upfront cost for solar, a solar lease or power purchase agreement, also known as a PPA, may be a good option for you. Let's review some advantages of leases and PPAs. There is usually little or zero upfront cost associated with leases and PPAs. If your lease or PPA payment plus your new lowered electric bill are lower than your current electric bill, you could be cash flow positive day one. Operations, maintenance, and warranties are included in the contract. Performance guarantees may also be included or negotiated into the contract. You may not have a tax liability to take advantage of the federal investment tax credit. A few things to consider before signing a lease. Leases allow for you as a homeowner to have solar installed on your home and pay the lease over a term of 20 years. This allows for a fixed monthly lease payment. You may also have the option of a prepaid lease meaning you pay one lump sum for the installation of your system and can avoid the monthly payments. A challenge you may come across is the sale of your home. Be sure to read the requirements and stipulations for selling your home with a leased solar system. A call to the leasing company or a thorough review of the lease should be able to provide you with the information you need. Do not be pressured into signing anything you do not understand. Take the time you need to review the contract, 
or lease before signing. A PPA is very similar to a lease, but the biggest difference is you as a homeowner are responsible for paying a per kilowatt hour price versus a fixed monthly payment. The PPA will offer you a per kilowatt hour price for your kilowatt hour production, usually less than what you are currently paying the utility. Since you will be paying a per kilowatt hour price, you want to ensure you do not oversize your system because you will be paying for every single kilowatt hour your system produces, whether your home uses the excess kilowatt hours or not. PPAs usually have the same terms as leases, 20 years, and most likely will include an accelerator. The accelerator is usually about 2 to 3% annually, which is similar to the average annual utility rate increase. You can always ask for the accelerator to be removed and lock in a low per kilowatt hour price for a 20 year term. As with leases, you will want to review the stipulations for selling your home. And again, do not be pressured into signing anything that you do not understand. Remember, the goal for both leases and PPAs is that your monthly lease or PPA cost plus your new solar electric bill should be less than your current non-solar electric bill. For more information, visit energycenter.org. This video is brought to you by the Center for Sustainable Energy, accelerating the transition to a sustainable world powered by clean energy.